Well, good morning, everyone out there in Region 12 land or wherever you might be joining us from. Uh, welcome to the Google update for e from ESC Region 12 um, that is part of March. I made it just in time. I think this is the last day of March. Tomorrow is April Fool's. So be alert. Uh, always be alert, especially in technology. Um, the people out in the interwebs like to make fake websites and fake things. So... Lots of fake headlines. Uh, I wasn't actually planning on talking about that, but you know, it's probably something to be aware of. So just be aware it's April 1st. And Google usually has something fun on April 1st. They don't try to like fool you. They just kind of put something fun and goofy out that's just kind of silly. So check Google out on April 1st. That's there. Um, my name is Josh Esri. I'm one of the digital innovation specialists at Region 12, your local Google guru, lover of all things googly. Uh, and today, at the towards the very end, I am going to be showing you a, um, a sneak peek of one of Google's products that is only out for a few people, the super nerds. Evidently, I've purchased enough Google Pixel phones that I get on this list now. So exciting. Um, thank you for everybody joining from wherever you're at today. This recording will be available later. Uh, at this same link, if you want to join, if you just want to click that link and watch it later, it should be there after this is over. Um, and just let me know, uh, either in the Google Doc or in, if you need to let me know anything, please let me know in the chat. There is about a 10 second delay, so it will be a little bit behind. Um, you can also make comments in the Google Doc while we're there, so let's go ahead and bring that up. Uh, if you would like to join us uh, in the Google Doc, you can find that at esc12.net slash Google. Google. And once you get there, you'll see a button that says current agenda, and that will take you to, yeah, you guessed it, the current agenda. Um, also, um, please join us on our YouTube page, uh, which is where this uh, video is located or channel. Uh, there's lots of Google help videos and random Google tips and all that good stuff. So check that out. And I just also checked the delay on the video. It's a lot more than 10 seconds. I think it's about 20 seconds. So just... I don't know what those quotes were for coming for. Just FYI. Camera's up here. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump into our document and let's take a look at the things that are going on in Google today. Uh, uh, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So here's our document. If, uh, again, you need to find this, let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So we'll go to esc12.net slash Google. And that'll take you to this page and you can just click on this button right here that says current agenda. Um, if you have anybody that you know, that's kind of googly, very googly, a little googly, not googly at all, but they want to be googly or they just want to stay up to date, have them join this group guys. We've been sitting on 98, 99 people like the part of our group. I, I want, I want to get to the magic 100. I even have some, some stuff. Hold on, hold on. I'll make a promise. Hold on. I don't have much, but I've got some Google swag that I wouldn't mind sending out. So uh, I've got I've got a bunch of lanyards. You know what? If you recommend somebody, I will send everybody a free lan. I'll send you a free lanyard, and my my face is getting dark. There we go. I'll send you a free lanyard a canvas bag from the Google summit. I got plenty of those left over. Okay. Um, and then I also have, uh, a, Ooh, I know this is a big one. Y'all it's a file organizer or holder a document holder. It says Google on it with a sticker. I don't know, I'll, but I'll give you a lanyard and a bag. If you want any of that stuff, just let me know. You don't even have to sign anybody up. I just need to get rid of that stuff. <laughs> so, but, Lanyard bag. I got something else, but that one's for my children. So there's that. Uh, so anyways, uh, current agenda or join group. Either one is good. Uh, but current agenda will take you here. So let's take a look at that. And that'll take you into the agenda. I saw somebody in here a little bit earlier. You can comment on anything. Uh, so if you just select some text and then hit the little comment button. off. To, oh, that's February. Why did it not update? Mm, hold on. Did it work? Well, Christina, you're in there. I don't know why anybody else isn't in there. Current agenda. 
Oh, we're, we're just in the wrong, we're in the wrong one, y'all. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make this easy so I don't have to change the website. If you're in that agenda, I'm gonna put the new agenda up at the top. Okay, so here we go. If you're in the February one, uh, new agenda right here. And apply. Okay, so that one right there, that should get you into, or did I just link the wrong one? No, I linked the right one. No, it's still February. Where's March? Wow, I'm just killing it today. All right, let's do this again. Thank y'all for hanging with me. I usually have it put together a little bit better than this. Copy, done. And new agenda, edit, here we go. Boom, okay, there we go. Now it should be the right one. All right, oh, you clicked on the one from the calendar. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's good to know that I put it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know why I put the wrong one, but that new one should take you to the March agenda. Whew. And now look, we're all in there. There's a bat and a Ibex and a region 12 specialist and a unicorn. Beautiful. Okay. So again, you can comment on anything. I've turned the editing off just so we don't mess the whole document up. So just select it, click the edit button. You're ready to rock and roll. Uh, the live videos are gonna be located there. Um, and then here is our agenda. You can click on any of those. And then we also have uh, just some regular housekeeping stuff. There's the link for the YouTube if you wanna watch our other videos that I have. I say our, like there's multiple, it's just me. Uh, so if you wanna watch any of those, those are available. Um, and then our important links, uh, how to get back to that, all of our Google stuff, there's the link right there. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, or Facebook, or any other, so or if you want to share your social media, I'll follow you, okay? So, uh, now let's go ahead and jump in, and let's talk about some uh, updates and some events that are coming up. So, um, our first update, again, we're sitting on 99. I need more, I need more, I just want one more, that's all I need. Um, so there's where you join esc12.net slash Google. Uh, so please be aware of that and just keep in mind. Um, and I think Christina was our, uh, star of the week. Uh, she actually used the Google group for, for what I've always envisioned about the Google group is that people can jump in there and they can ask questions and whether I know it or not, somebody else might, but it might just also be a place to say, Hey, know this. And I think it was Christina and Christina, you can confirm that in the te in the uh, chat if you would like to. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, that was Christina, but uh, she found something on Google Maps or the kids found something on Google Maps. It was kind of inappropriate. And then we all kind of decided you really can't do anything about Google Maps. If there's a problem, you just got to be just got to be diligent and uh, just make sure you know where that stuff is and be watching things. Um, you can get all of that information at our Google group. So if you go to esc12.net slash Google and then go to the Google group, you'll see that discussion in there from Christina about Google Maps. And if you ever have one, if you have something you would like to ask the group and not just me, because you're like, I just bother him too much. Well, by the way, nobody ever bothers me too much. You can just email Google educators at esc12.net. You just email email, email that email, and it goes out to the whole group and everybody's able to see that question, answer, update, whatever. So um, going on, uh, artificial intelligence AI is still a really big topic. It's going to be that way for a while as chat GPT gets better, Bing chat gets better. Uh, there's over 50 major tech companies that are using chat GPT in their services. Um, and then Google, uh, is playing around with their own called Bard right now. So if you're curious about that, this is a a webinar that is recorded of our the digital innovation team kind of going over that information what that looks like how to use it um what are the what are some of the concerns what are some of the big celebrations so if you're curious watch that feel free to share it out uh, our innovative teaching and learning conference is july 17th if you'll click on that link that will take you to our uh, homepage, and we're looking for everything from technology innovative teaching strategies, way to engage children, way to engage students and how to design meaningful learning experiences. All those things are there. Uh, and we need people to present at all of them and people to learn from each other at all of those. Um, so there they are right there. 
engagement motivation, structural strategies, technology, and relevant learning experiences. If you're curious about presenting, we're still taking them. So if you'll click on that present at ITL, um, you can do that and you can also save your seat right there. Uh, but there will be Google stuff there. So that's why I'm bringing it up. Uh, and then we also this summer, uh, I'm going all in y'all. I'm going Googly. Uh, we got Google boot camps. We got Google online courses. We got stuff about being creative with Google and how to use AI with Google. Um, so if you click on this button right here, it says info, that'll jump out to our canvas flyer or our Canva flyer, uh, with all of the things coming up, the pricing on all of those things. And then you can come down here and anything that you're interested in, you just click on it. It'll take you a place to go ahead and save your seat for that workshop. Uh, so be aware though, my Google Classroom ones that I'm doing, they're all online and self-paced with virtual office hours for anybody that needs it. So I'll be doing live stuff if you want it. I'll also be having office hours on demand if people need them, but it's mainly self-paced. So if you're brand new, level one, if you've been kind of doing it and you want to find out more level two, if you're like, I know it all but i want to make sure i know it all level three or you can just take them all in order so totally up to you moving on all right now why y'all have actually came here and you're like josh has not talked about google a whole lot um so we actually have to get into like the new stuff y'all that's why it's an update y'all want to know about the new stuff let's find out about the new stuff All right, so, oh, that link is still up there on the page. As we look through this document right here, and it just does not like to brighten my face. There we go. As we look through this document, just remember some of it's not out yet. There is a timeline for each one of these, so click on so click on all the information in these links. If you wanna know when it's gonna happen, some of it's already live, and I'll try to make note of all of those things. So here we go, what is new? So starting with uh, March 3rd right here, there we go. Let's make this a little bigger so we can all see it. Starting here on March 3rd, this is an old one. Uh, wait, wait, this is not mine. Okay, y'all ignore this. These were notes from uh, Eric Kurtz that I was kind of uh, comparing stuff to to see if there was anything I missed. So we're going to take that out. I was like, this is not mine at all. Y'all getting dizzy yet? This is kind of getting making me dizzy. Okay. Okay, let me zoom out. This is really, this is making me nauseous. There we go. Boop. I forgot to delete all that. There we go. All right, so number one is we have that YouTube is adding multi language. Actually, I'm not going to skip these. Okay. We'll skip that one. I don't need that one. Uh, Luma Fusion, y'all. This is the coolest thing ever. One of the biggest problems with Google, especially Chromebooks in the classroom, is that video editing is hard. Like a lot of any kind of editing is hard. You usually have to have a program for that. A lot of people don't use Chromebooks because I can't do my word on it. I can't do my podcasts on it. I can't do my video editing on it. Well, people understand that and the web is getting faster. The web is getting stronger as well as the machines that browse the web. And so many of these programs are now being able to work on Chromebooks. Uh, Luma Fusion is a... It's been a while, around for a while. It's been on OS, I believe. I'm not, not positive on that. Uh, that is a video editor, like full blown. Like it's really good. It's got a lot of the power features that Premiere has. It doesn't have all of Premiere, obviously. That's a really big program. And same thing as um, Final Cut Pro. And the cool thing is, is it lives on a Chromebook and it uses the web to power all of the features on it. So it's a really good balance of both of those features, works off the web and lives in the Chromebook, and it's a one-time fee. So if you can get licenses, purchase licenses for those one-time fees, they just live on those Chromebooks and you just share them every time. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna look with a school, but if you have a Chromebook that will use LumaFusion, I would definitely encourage you to check that out. I mean, it, it does multi-track editing with audio, video, it's got effects, it's got transit. It's like Wii Video, except I'm not a big fan of Wii Video. I feel like it's slow, takes too long, there's too much stuff behind paywalls. 
and this is this is a good this is a good thing. So, if you have one, I would go ahead and give that a try. If you have you know some money burning a hole in your pocket, but that one really excites me. Um, next one up is that Google Keep Notes you can now put on the screen of any Android or Chrome devices. I did not put that Android and Chrome devices. So if you've used Google Keep before, you know that that is Google's own proprietary note-taking app. So you can now put those sticky notes on your desktop or your uh, wallpaper, whatever. So here's like a, here is a picture of a Chrome window, like a desktop window, a Chromebook win, uh, wallpaper, and you can have your Google Keep notes like little sticky notes on your desktop. You don't have to open Google Keep for that. I don't have my Chromebook hooked up. I'll show you that right now. Um, but that's a pretty cool feature. If you're a big Keep user, uh, I think that's pretty uh, that's pretty big for students as well, uh, that they can actually put reminders up that they have to remember through classes on their dashboard. Uh, you'll see down here for availability that it's avail available to everyone and 15 days starting on March 2nd. So it should be rolled out to everyone as long as those uh, systems are updated. All right. So I think everybody's seen the next one, but this is a refreshed interface for Google Drive, Docs, Sheets, and all that jazz. So you can see right here in our Google Doc, we're just gonna stay in here. Um, you'll see up here at the top, oh, this is not going to zoom correctly, is it? <laughs> oh, we'll find out. Uh, but you'll see right here, they've gone to like this bluish gray. There's not as many dark grays and hard lines anymore. Uh, and so it's just kind of nicer to look at. However, they've kind of hidden a lot of stuff uh, that used to be kind of front front facing and right in front of you. So just be aware that you might have to do some hunting to find things. So number one uh, that we're the Google community is a little upset about, especially the educator Google community. Wow, I'm getting dark again. Okay, let's get closer to the light. Blinded by the light. Come on. Eh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so uh, you'll, uh, where was I? Yes, the big thing is you'll notice down here in the bottom right-hand corner, y'all, there's something missing. It's the explore tool. Y'all remember that little star that used to sit in the bottom? You could click it and you could insert images and you could do a web search. You could uh, even do your citations like MLA, APA, Chicago citations. You could do all of that. It's gone. I don't know if they're gonna bring it back. It's there. It's just not a button anymore. So you now have to make sure that you know that you need to go to tools, I think. Is it tools? Yes. And then go to explore. And then it pops up over on the right. I am not aware of a way to get the button back. I am not aware if they're going to bring the button back or if there's another way to get to it other than going to tools and explore. Now, if you want to get super fancy, I guess you could say that you could hit Control, Option, Shift, L. Yeah, because or I. It's a capital. Shift, Command, Option, Shift, I. If on Windows, Control, Option, Shift, I. And that'll bring that up. Um, but gosh, that little button on the bottom was so handy. And now they took it away. I'm kind of upset about that. Um, so be aware of that. Also, uh, I've been told that this uh, your version history, which is down here, this might be going away on the menu. So if you go to version history a lot, be aware that this is going away because it has moved up here in the top. Oh, you can't see it because my face is in the way. Hold on. Whoop. There we go. This guy right here, uh, the clock going backwards, that is also version history. You can click on that and see all the changes that have been made, just like you could with version history before, but it is now moved. Uh, also, add-ons and extensions are now grouped under one tab. You used to have extensions and add-ons, and now your add-ons and extent extensions are both under the extensions menu item. So be aware of that. I like I like the interface. I think it looks pretty clean. It's a lot more chill to use. You'll also notice that when you use when you make comments, that the boxes are rounder. This is a little bit softer, a little bit nicer. It's like it's not so in your face. So just be aware of those two things that might move and anything else that I haven't discovered that might move. If you have a teacher that says, they took the thing away, go look through the menu first because they might have just put it in the menu instead. All right, moving on. 
the new Google Trends. I love this one. So if you've if you've used Google Trends before, it's a really really cool website. So let's go ahead and take a look. One, this is the this is their news release about it. Um, so let's see, uh, self cleaning toilets. Let's take a look at that trend. So if you've never been to Google Trends, it is kind of Google's forward facing uh, analytics page for what how many people are searching or what popularity I should say more what, what the popularity of searches are. So you can look at this over the past. So this one is searching for how many people or what is the search interest over time for self cleaning toilets. It's a really weird search term to use uh, for the past seven days. And so you can see kind of how the search interest is. And it's just interest based on this zero being nobody searched for it uh, to a hundred uh, to this is the highest point. This is the most searches during this time span that you've asked for. So if we come in here and we say uh, over the past 12 months, so let's make it a full year, you'll see that that hundred's in a different spot because it's the highest uh, interest over over this specific period of time. And, they're usually, and there's almost always a zero unless people just stop searching for it. Uh, always like doing um, sports teams or sports interest. So uh, right now baseball has started. So let's, uh, let's do BLB. I meant to say MLB. So let's search for the MLB because uh, that was just opening, opening weekend or opening day had started. So you can go ahead and see the interest over time. Looks like uh, October was really popular. So you can have these discussions with your kids, like why is it really popular around October? Um, and I'm currently into F1. I've actually been into F1 for a while, so we'll just put F1 in there. And we can see, oh, look at that. F1 almost took over MLB on February 26th to March 4th. Interesting. Hmm, better watch out baseball. <laughs> No, because, uh, yeah, that's insane right there. Uh, but also doing things that are uh, legitimately interesting to your students. Um, I like I like looking up like the Billboard 100 and see who's searching more for artists. Uh, the games that they're playing, search for Apex Legends, Roblox, Fortnite, and seeing what those search results are. And then you can come down after that and you can even see what is the interest by state and how those kind of lean maybe. And then interest by subregion and sub searches. So you can see also uh, related searches. Let's take this a little bit further since MLB and F1 are kind of very uh, internationally different. And we'll go ahead and say worldwide. And so that changes tremendously. You can see F1 has a lot more peaks of interest F1 usually happens on Sunday, so that's probably where a lot of those things are happening at. Um, and they have an off-season, too. So down here, and we can go ahead and see, well, where are those terms being, are those terms uh, popular? So we have over here in the United States, you can see that, and then you can hover over Australia, 84% to 61%. Um, so it's really, really cool stuff. Now, this has always been there, but the home page is where it's really been different. They're really focusing on education um, and diving deeper into a lot of the stuff. And they even started making some trend experiences. I'm going to show you one. It's very, very cool. Um, I'm, it's actually not going to have the sound play through, but there, that's okay. There's not a whole lot of sound. Um, but you can come through here and they actually give you things to just jump off of if you're like, I don't know what to search for. And they usually have something that is... Uh, trending at this time to dive deeper into. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to look at March Madness, you can click on that and it shows you tons of internet search result data about March Madness. But the one I want to show you is some of the experiences. This is a Google trend experience. Uh, they, they are starting to make more of these. Uh, this one is new, this local year in search. So they're already making new ones, but this Google, 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 Google fight, fright, Geist. There we go. Um, and so they took all of the popular uh, search queries, popular search queries for Halloween costumes, like what people might want to be dressing up as. And you can see what those top ones were. So like one is witch. This is nationally witch, uh, bear, zombie. And let's see, uh, I don't know how far we can go down. Let's see. Number 99 was among us, uh, the video game characters. Then you can go locally. Uh, I can't do it on this because my computer will not allow uh, 
location data. So, uh, but you can click that and see something closer to you. But here's the fun thing. You can come over here to the costume wizard, uh, which is behind my face. So let me move that again. So we'll come over here to the costume wizard. And then you can use this to have a costume picked out for you. So you can say, how spooky do I want it to be? Well, you know, I don't want to scare any children when I'm walking around. So let's go a little less on the spooky. Okay. And then I want, I want something modern. I want something modern, something new, something trendy, something hip. And we're going to keep it on national because I can't do local. And then uniqueness level. I want to be super unique. I'll be the only one. And then we can click submit. And looks like we're going to be Owlette. Owlette is from the PJ, PJ Masks. Yes, I've watched children's shows. So sad. Uh, Owlette is from PJ Masks. <laughs> I'm sad that I know that. That information is taking some taking place of something in my brain that is probably a lot more valuable. So anyways, you can go through that, pick out a Halloween costume. Your kids have probably had fun with that too. Uh, so check out Google Trends, especially their homepage, and just see what's going on. You can have the home, the explore, and they even have a trending now section that just kind of shows you exactly what you think, what's trending now. And you can do real-time search, global searches, country searches. Super cool. All right. Moving on. Um, Let's see. If you use Google Chat, I am a big chat person, y'all. If you use Google Chat, which is built into your Gmail now, I'm going to come over here to one of our groups right now. And if you click on your Google Space area, your Google Space, so this is mainly for Google Spaces. If you're unfamiliar with Google Spaces, I've got a video about that in my TMYKs. I'll uh, link it in the comments below after the video's over. But um, Google Spaces are like old chat rooms. Y'all remember chat rooms? Everybody remembers chat rooms back in the 90s. Um, they're like chat rooms, but they're dedicated and they're very controlled and they're usually within an organization. Uh, so you can have some that are dedicated to uh, just like water cooler talk, you know, like what's, what's just kind of interesting, what's going on. You could do some brainstorms. You could share social media. You could just have fun ones like share a meme, those kind of things. Um, so anyways, oh, look, somebody's in the door, you know. Oh, look, Ed said he loves Google Chat. But if we come up here to the the more you know, so we'll use this one since uh, Ed chatted me. Um, you can come up here to your space settings. And now you can actually have control over your spaces. These are, these are brand new. And this is like really, really we've been wanting these for a while. There's more control that should be added, but this is a good starting part. So who can manage members and groups? Maybe only the space managers, okay? If you have everybody, then everybody can just add people. Everybody can manage people. I don't think they can delete them, but they can add them and turn them off and stuff like that. So if you don't trust everybody in the room, maybe just put space managers. You can have as many space managers as you want to, by the way. So you might want to lock that down. External members, you can't change that. You have to change that when you create a group. Uh, this one right here is internal only at, ser at the service center. So we can't change that anyways. But who can modify the space details? Like if we, if the, if the name of the group changes or something like that, can anybody do that? Or maybe just space managers, the history that's set usually by your administration or your Google admin. So that is usually also grayed out as well, uh, because you know, for, for privacy issues and data issues, that stuff does need to stay, um, uh, stored and not be deleted. Um, and then who can use the all feature? If you didn't know that you can hit at all and it will tag everybody in that space and notify everybody in that space. So if you don't mind everybody using that, which I don't, I think that's cool. If you want to share something, you want everybody to know about it, let's do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now those are ready to rock and roll. So if you use Google chat, which I, I recommend you would, especially internally, we have some schools that are using them for their teachers, but they've turned them off for their students. I think that's a great idea. It's a great starting space. Maybe you get to the point where you do, maybe you don't, but just letting your teachers have that control, I think is a really cool thing. You may find out that, that may be a more effective way of communicating, communicating with, uh, with everybody in your, on your campus or in your district. And if you have the Google Gmail app on your phone, it's there as well, and you get uh, notifications like it's, a, like it's a text message. So love it, and that's right there. Um, let's see. We're not going to go over all of these because some of these are just like bleh, 
you don't you don't need them all. Uh, but I wanted to like if you see something and you're like, oh, thank goodness that Google Meet finally put a label for external people in my Google Meet. So, um, so you can go over all of those. Um, next up is uh, stuff that's happening from the key uh, from Google that that will be launching soon. These do not have. Um, these do not have rollout dates yet, but there's some really cool stuff. This is from the keyword. This is Google's main thing. So if you want to click on this, you can see some of the stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, Google practice sets, I bet will be launched this summer. They've been talking about it for over a year and practice sets, I bet will be here very soon. This is a new type of quiz. I'm going to use that very loosely because I think Google is doing the right thing. They're trying to get away from calling them assessments or quizzes. Um, and these are more, I, if I could like name it for them, I would call it a growth mindset training platform. <laughs> you have questions with answers, but not necessarily grades. And the students are able to get hints on things while they're doing it and help themselves and get support while they're doing it. Uh, and you can also have them check and then answer, and if it's not right, they can try it again and look at more stuff. There's even an area that allows for annotation. So if a math teacher wants a student to show their work, they can actually write it in the box, and Google has enough machine learning and AI about doing the math work that it can check their handwriting, and it can even give them support off of what they wrote down. And you'll be able to check it later as well. And you can give annotations and feedback also on top of that. Uh, from, the, from the teacher side, you'll also have like a growth chart. So you'll be able to see how everybody is progressing, not necessarily who's failing and who's passing, but how well are they progressing? You'll see what I'm talking about? Like it's got questions and it's got answers, but it's not so much about, it's not so much about like the grade you get. It's about the growth you have and about the autonomy during that process. Um, so be looking out for that. Unfortunately, it is going to be part of one of the paid Google levels. Uh, I think it's going to be on the teaching and learning upgrade. Uh, so just be aware of that if you're interested, I'm sure. Uh, I've already talked to Google a few times for uh, down in Austin. Uh, they're, they'd be happy to like let you demo it or pilot w with a class uh, to see if it's something that you'd actually be interested in. But Google is adding a lot more value to those, so it might start making sense at some point to pay for those. So uh, if you do pay for one of those and you find it is valuable, email me. Uh, that would be great. Uh, I'd like to hear more about that. Uh, Let's see, what else we got? Google is finally adding a reader mode. If y'all can see this right here, I'm gonna to try to zoom in on it. So here we go. Um, so this is one thing that I know Google has been struggling with because reader modes do, do exist in like Safari uh, and Opera and all these, other, uh, all these other browsers. I think it even exists maybe in, uh, what's that one called? Edge, it might be in the Microsoft Edge where you can go to a reading mode and it will, it'll strip the website that you're looking at of everything extraneous other than the text. It'll get rid of pictures and ads and videos and all that stuff. It makes sense for everybody else to do it. But if y'all, if y'all are already thinking like, that would sound like a terrible idea from Google because Google makes most of their money from ads. That's right. I have a delay. I don't know if anybody answered, but I could hear you yelling it through the interwebs. Those... And so I see how they've done it. They keep the website on one side and they show you a reader mode on the right, which I think is probably a good compromise for their business strategy. Totally makes sense. Um, so the website's still there with the ads, but on the right side is where you're going to find that reading mode. I don't currently think that I have reading mode yet. We're gonna find out. Nope, uh, it is not currently rolled out, but it is coming. So be aware of that. That's going to be really, really cool, especially, and I don't know if you kind of noticed, but there are overlays as well. You can increase the text size and do overlays. You can even change the font uh, for a limited number of fonts. Okay, so y'all can read the rest of that. The other ones, uh, there's a few more things that I do want to point out that is coming. So this is uh, new teaching and learning features. Um, so there's practice sets. There's also going to be interactive questions that you can add to your YouTube videos. So those of y'all out there that use uh, Edpuzzle, 
uh, and what's the other one? Play Posit. If you use those, this is going to be very similar, except it's going to be in-house for Google now, and it's going to integrate with all the systems that you already use. So you'll be able to have a YouTube video and embed questioning in that YouTube video for the video to stop and for you to ask the questions and get feedback on those. So that's going to be really, really, really cool. Um, the collaboration in Docs, these things aren't out yet. Some of them are. I'm going to show you a couple of them. So building blocks, they're adding more building blocks. Um, and one of them that's going to be cool are going to be voting chips. So you can actually have a document that has like a voting button, like a yes or a no, and then kids can just click on it or teachers can click on it. And then those numbers will just automatically change and you'll add those numbers up. I'm going to go ahead and jump out and show you one of them right now because I do have a few of them live on mine. So let's go ahead and we're going to, I'm going to zoom in here just so y'all can see this a little bit better. So y'all have always noticed this tap at to insert. Um, when you do that, don't be afraid to do it. Okay. First off, number one, don't be afraid. Uh, no fear, no fear. You can scroll down and show all these things that you can insert into a document. You want to insert a date? Let's insert a date. So if you're, if you're saying, Hey, let's meet on this date, you can insert a date and anybody in this document can click on it. They can say book a meeting or they can jump out to their calendar and put it on their calendar. It's pretty awesome. If I'm talking, if we're saying like, hey, I need so-and-so to do this, like um, I can ask, uh, uh, well, I'm just going to do it myself. Oh, look, Ashley's already there. Sorry. Um, I can say, Ashley, we need to work on rally uh, at the service center. Uh, so I put that there. And then I can click share because it says, hey, you're sharing it with this person that doesn't have access. Just go ahead and share it with them. But those are smart chips that you push that at sign, click that at sign, tap that at, type that at sign, whatever you want to say. Just, just too many ways of saying things, y'all. Um, and you can add all of these. You can add everything. Uh, the new thing that they've done is they've added a stopwatch feature, which I think is going to be amazing for any document that you might share in Google Classroom. So make your document with all of the prompts or tables or interactive things and set that at the top and say, you know, give yourself 10 minutes to work on this. And they don't have to watch a clock. All they have to do is hover and click start. And then there is a clock running. It's not a countdown time. They are going to put a countdown one on there, but I think this is better. It's more, it allows for more autonomy and self-regulation than having something just beep at you. Um, so that's, I think it's a really cool feature, but be looking out every time you click that at for new things in there. Uh, Cause if you haven't, if you haven't been clicking it, if you haven't been typing at y'all, y'all ain't living yet in Google docs, uh, like these meeting notes. I love these meeting notes. Look, look at that. You just click on it and it puts everybody's stuff in there. Like that's so cool. Uh, and you have place for notes and you have a place for action items. It's amazing. Uh, you can also come up here to insert and go straight to building blocks on that insert right there. I, I keep trying to zoom in. I'm sorry if that's like messing up what y'all are seeing. Uh, if you look at building blocks and there's even other things in there like a content tracker, project assets, and code blocks. So a lot of times you can't type code because like this is code. This is weird. Uh, so you can actually say, oh, I want to put a Python code. And so there you go. There's Python. And you can even switch as you're typing, which is also pretty awesome. Okay, so those are smart chips, and those are some of the things coming uh, along with those voting chips. I'm going to see if uh, one of these GIFs, I think, does show a voting chip. So here you go. Here's what the voting chips look like. So you put at, and then they'll have a voting chip, and then people just click on the one they want to vote for. So this is like, what book do you want to read? We could say, what's a good meeting time for everyone? And then they just click on it. Uh, the other one that you weren't seeing was uh, the timer that they're going to start putting in. So you'll be able to see that you can count down from a time. Um, let's see. Um, yep, you can read through the rest of those. I don't want to take too much more time, uh, but I do want to highlight some of the really cool stuff. Uh, next up is there are five chromebook updates that are in the latest uh chrome os um, i'm not going to go over all these again uh there are 13 new chromebooks i'm going to show you a few of them uh if you've never been to the chromebook finder gosh y'all check check it out uh they are getting they're getting so good like i actually have one at my house and i don't feel a need to use another one other than just having a nice one because i spent uh, money 
I didn't spend a lot of money and it just feels cheap. You know, the speakers aren't really nice. Actually, it feels pretty good, but the speakers aren't nice and the battery could be better anyways. So we'll come down here and we'll go to find your device. If you want to see the new ones under the find your, ad find your advice, find your device, you're going to come over here to the sort by section and go to new and that'll show you all of the new ones. And I was at TCEA, uh, whenever that was. <laughs> lifetime ago. Um, and if you use a Lenovo, this Lenovo E Gen 3, they just released, they had, they had it under lock and key, but they let me like play on it a little bit and like pick it up and type on it. I am not a fan of this four gigabytes of Ram. Um, I think the storage is fine since most of it's in the cloud anyways, but I'll tell you one thing that was amazing about it is that screen was like one of the crisper screens I have seen on a Chromebook. It was so clear. It, and even though the nit brightness, which if you're unfamiliar with nits, it's just a way you kind of measure brightness. It's not that high uh, technically uh, on the spec sheet, but it was like perfect in that bright TCA exhibit hall. It looked great. Uh, so if you're interested, if you're a Lenovo uh, district, Maybe get a demo, see if you like it. Um, but so these other ones are really cool. This one right here, this Acer one, this one, uh, for all you environmentally conscious people out there, that one is made completely out of recycled plastic. So some other cool stuff in there as well. So go to that, click on new, and you'll be able to see what's going, what's going on in the world of Chromebooks. And let's move on to the next one. Okay, so... Google Chrome screencasts. We've talked about this um, in another video. I'll try to link that one as well, but it records everything on your Chromebook and it also records a transcript of everything you say. This is super helpful for you as a teacher making recordings and you can do it as as an admin. Students could even do this to uh, show proof of learning and show proof of the concept that they understand the concept. You could use it as a secretary if you just needed to show someone this is how the thing works. This is where I need you to put the thing. And so the really cool thing about it is it's, it works like Screencastify, Screencast-O-Matic, all that. It records everything on the screen. It has built-in annotations so you can highlight and you can draw over things. It also captures all of your audio and it puts a transcript in. It's been able to do that, but the two big things that's like is that you can actually translate the transcript now into different languages. So I speak it in English, but I've got a Spanish speaker in the room. They can pull the transcript down, the drop down, change it to Spanish, and they can read what I'm saying in their native language. Right? Right? I feel you. I feel you. The other thing, if you've tried to use this feature before, the bad part about it is you have to view them on a Chromebook. If you view them, if you like, there's a link to it. But the link doesn't work if you're not on a Chromebook. You have to go to the, you have to send a Google Drive link and somebody has to download it and then watch it on a player. But it doesn't have the transcript and it's also missing a couple other things. Can't remember what it is. So um, now, I don't know, lost my train of thought. I was trying to remember what the other thing was. But now anybody can play it, anybody can see the transcript. Anybody can see the annotations. Anybody can interact with it that you share the link to. And it is it is private between the person, like it's your students. So not everybody's student, like if a student makes a comment to you, you're the only one that's going to be able to see it. Um, but that's amazing because I remember when they, I was like, why did y'all do that? Like only on Chromebooks? Like what if you, so many teachers have desktops, like this doesn't make sense. Anyways, uh, those, those are huge and I'm really excited about that. Uh, cast moderator. If you use Cast Moderator, I want to know, okay? Uh, if you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. I'm looking for some people that are beta testing that. Um, then we talked about the new uh, reader mode. And there's some other customization tools for uh, Chrome OS that they're doing more. They're doing let you, letting you do group-based policy management instead of just doing organizational units. You can do policy management based on groups now. So check that one out. That's number five. All right. Um, do, 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 do. I think that's about it for those. Um, I'm going to talk about a few things. Uh, 
that I just want to show you that are super cool, not necessarily updates, but are definitely some things you want to check out. Um, so I'm a big fan of arts and culture. I always try to add arts and culture stuff to our Google discussion. Uh, number one, uh, in Google Arts and Cultures I want to talk about are pocket galleries. Uh, I will tell you all right now, the thing, I'm just, hold on, I'm going to change camera because I need to feel like I'm talking to you. The thing that I don't enjoy about arts and culture is it's very amoebas. Like you're not sure like where everything is or how you're supposed to use it. Um, so I'm just going to be up front about, front with you about that. Feel free to explore it. Uh, spend some time just kind of looking through uh, and figuring out where everything is, uh, cause it is, is a little confusing. Um, so I'm going to show you these two things I'm going to show you. You can't just go onto the website and find it. You need to search those things. So I'm going to show you something about pocket galleries and I'm going to show you 360 videos. Um, on those, you just, just go into arts and culture and search those things and you'll be able to find it. So let's take a look at those now. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the pocket galleries. So these are all like 3D galleries that you can interact with. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to click on this arts and color one. It takes a little bit of, a little bit of time to load because it is doing some 3D rendering, making sure that your web browser can handle all that information. Um, and they, ha they have a bunch of these. They're very, very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the gallery over here. And now we are in a virtual gallery. This is a little different from like, you know, uh, you can do like Google Street View through the Louvre and things like that where you're seeing it real in real, like how it looks in real life. These are uh, high resolution collections from around different museums that they've put into a virtual space um, that you can just be in one space and see it all. Um, so we're gonna come over here and we can come over to this painting, gives us information about it. Um, we can rotate, we can drag, we can even zoom in more because like I said, they are high resolution photos. So you can really get down to the details um, and they show you usually, uh, it'll give you some kind of history about each one. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and we're gonna keep looking around. So let's go ahead and go down here to another part of the gallery. Let's go in here, let's check this one out. And so this is a Kandinsky you can always click the little pop out box and that will take you to the arts and culture main page for that piece of art that will give you a little bit more detail about it. If you have it on a mobile device, you can even see what that looks like in augmented reality. You should hold your tablet up, hold your phone up. It'll put that piece of artwork on the wall uh, in, in relation to how, how the room is. So it actually show you in real size and you can click on that. And again, you can zoom in and really, really, really see the detail and these, um, the texture and the strokes for that piece of art. I think that's super, that's super cool. Um, but anyways, check out those pocket galleries. Uh, there's a lot to explore in there. And I challenge you, I challenge anyone to find how can we use these across all content areas and still support all of the goals and the standards that we have to uh, that we have to meet because this makes things so much more real. This is like a real piece of art making it relevant to them. Uh, the next one are 360 videos. Again, when you go in to Google arts and culture, if you want to find any of these, just come up here to the top, right? Actually, it's behind my head. I don't know why. Ah, oh my, I just moved the whole screen. I'm sorry. You'll come up here to the top, right? You'll click on that. And then you can search for 360 videos or search for pocket galleries and it'll give all of them to you. The 360 videos are really cool. Uh, I'm going to go show you my favorite one. Um, let's see, let's go down here, uh, to this concert hall. This thing is super cool. Um, uh, you can't, you'll be able to hear it cause I don't have the sound pumping through, uh, my streaming service right now, but I'm actually hearing the music that they're playing right now. And as they're playing, we can move around and we can actually see each artist as they're performing. And this one jumps around to different areas. So this will eventually get into the concert hall. Oh, look at that guy. He's like wearing an old marching band uniform. And then we'll jump into the concert hall over here. If it's like, come on, you got a buffer. Okay, there we go. 
uh, but they also have Carnegie Hall in 360. And let's see if I can find, oh, this, uh, where is it? Where is it? The Beethoven one is really cool because it'll actually let you switch between cameras and you can like sit behind the tubas or you can sit behind the cellos or you can sit behind the flutes uh, while everything's being played. That one's super cool. But anyways, those 360 videos, I encourage you to go check those out. Okay, I'm running short on time. I want to make sure I get these other ones out. Um, earlier, y'all might have seen a sidebar that popped out. Not a lot of people know about this, but Google's trying to get everybody talking about it. So I'm going to jump over to Google, and I'm just going to go to google.com like I'm doing a search. Um, and I'm going to search for, uh, let's see, Google Arts and Culture. I get my search results like normal. And have y'all ever been in this place where you search for something and you're like, that's the thing. That's, that's what I need. Sure. And then you click on it. And then when you click on it, you're like, uh, no, no, that's not what I want. And you have to keep going back to your search result. And you're like, nope, that one's not it. Click. Nope. That one's not it. Click. Oh, maybe that one's it. Maybe, maybe the fifth one down. Maybe that's the one you're looking for. So now after you search, you do have to do, you have to do a Google search first, must Google first. And after that, if you look up here, at the very end of your address bar, there is a G, a little G, a little G. You click that, it pulls this sidebar open. I'm just never in the right place at the right time. Oh no, I can't move my face, y'all. Hold on. There we go. Okay, let's open that back up. All right, so there we go. There's our sidebar. And you can see all of the search results that I just went through. So maybe that first one didn't work. So then I can click on this one and it'll automatically take me to the next one. Or maybe it was this one, or maybe it was this one. And I can adjust this, I can slide this in and out. And so now I don't have to keep going back to that Google search result. I think that's pretty awesome. Let's click back up on that first one now. Maybe this is the one where I wanted to be. Maybe I want to remember this, or maybe I was in, maybe I was reading about the tin, this, this cool cats thing. Oh, and be aware, obviously, that we are in Google arts and culture. And so some of the stuff is not completely appropriate. Uh, all right. So maybe I want to read this for later. So I'm going to click, I'm going to come over here to google.com. I'm going to click here and then I'm going to go to my reading list and I can say add current tab and it will show me this thing that I want to read later. So any of those things that we were going over earlier through the keyword, uh, five Chromebook updates for students and teachers, maybe I want to read that one for later. I can click this add current tab and then I can come here. Oh, I want to read this one later, add current tab. And here's all of them. Maybe I read this one, I'm done with it. It'll go down here to these pages that I have read. I think that's pretty sweet too. Uh, but that is in your sidebar right here. And you also have your bookmarks. So if you just want to see your bookmarks, you can put them over there on the side too. Be aware this is where your reading, uh, your reading panel is going to be also. Okay. So that's your sidebar. Um, and last thing I'm going to show you is Google Bard. So if you are unfamiliar with chat GPT, this is a chat, a forward facing chat bot that, um, let me see. There we go. It's a forward facing chat bot that you are allowed to communicate with. Like you're talking to a real person. It scrapes the web. It makes responses based on things that they've seen on the web and that they've trained it to talk naturally. Uh, Google is a little behind on this. And so they've just released theirs. It's not as good as some of the other ones, but I did want to show you, uh, that they do have one out there. So if I wanted to say, um, I need a, um, what do we want to call it? I need a choice board for eighth graders, uh, in order to assess the, uh, history of the Alamo. Let's do that. I haven't tried this one, so we're going to see what happens live. So it's going to give me a little twirly star at the top as it's working to let me know that it's working. Oh, gosh, I keep grabbing the wrong thing. I want to grab that. There we go. 
All right, so here are some act, here are some choices that they have. They could write a research paper, a historical story, uh, debate a question, write a timeline, create a map of the Alamo, draw a diagram, give a presentation, interview an expert. Even gives you a little bit of a grading rubric. And if you've never seen this before, okay, hold on, let's pause. And let's talk about BARD before we talk about the implications, because I know that's what some of y'all are thinking. We'll come over here to view other drafts. We're going to click on view other drafts, and they actually give you three different drafts that Google produced during that uh, production. So here is uh, more of like, it looks more like it's in a lesson form. So there's the choices, gives you objectives, choices, assessments, how to grade them, and what the extensions are for each one. That one's cool. Um, and then here's another one. Same thing. It's more of a lesson format with quiz questions, essay questions, and gives you questions for each one of them. Um, and so just implication uh, purposes. I know a lot of you are like, oh, what? It's going to take our jobs. Like, no. Like, think about how many of your teachers hear about, like, you need to have a choice board. You need to uh, have scaffolding for differentiation. And like, it's just so many more things on the plate. This allows the teachers to let something else do the heavy lift and the teacher can do in there, be, teacher can get in here being the professional and the one that knows their kids and knows the content and tweak each one of those. They copy, paste and put them in a doc and tweak each one of them. And that, I mean, though we know these practices are good, but they're so hard to implement because it just takes so much time to sit there and think of 10 things I could do in order to assess my students. Um, you could even say, um, let's, let's just try it. How can I add in differentiation? I don't know, that might be too much of a broad question. We'll see what happens. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so for the so example, you could offer a research paper assignment for high level, historical fiction for lower level. So gives you a, gives you a little bit of differentiation. Again, may not be the best ones, but gives you a jumping off point and the heavy lift is done. And you can even change it up. You can even say, you can even put a TEKS standard in for it to align with that. So we are, we are getting a little bit uh, in the weeds now, and we are almost out of time. So I wanted to say thank y'all uh, for joining. Uh, if you have any feedback, please let me know. Email me. You can find my email at that esc12.net slash Google thing. You can find my email there. Uh, let me know what you liked, what you didn't, what you want to see, uh, what you don't want to see, uh, anything. Uh, I always appreciate the feedback, just knowing people watched it and have some uh, some thought about it, and you're left with something. So uh, thank you again for coming, and I hope you all have a wonderfully googly Saturday. All right. We'll see you all later. Have a great day.